Hello everyone and welcome to my Spigot Seal Ranching Tutorial 2.0. Yes, this is a re-upload of my previous guide, because the build had some critical issues that unfortunately slipped through my testing. I'm deeply sorry if some of you had trouble with the setup I proposed, and I want to do right by you with this carefully scrutinized overhaul. So let's get into it. Spigot Seals are a new critter introduced with the Frosty Planet Pack DLC, they produce ethanol when sufficiently fed with the nectar of bonbon trees, and drop tallow at the end of their life cycle. Tallow is a new cooking ingredient used in the deep fryer in order to produce squash fries, noshnoms, fish taco and shellfish tempura. You can also combine it with meat in the microbe musher to produce pemmican, which similar to berry sludge has no expiration date and is a great food for space missions. Additionally, when heated to above 80 degrees, the tallow transforms into crude oil. In this guide, I will show you how to set up a fully self-sustainable spigot seal ranch that doesn't require mercury sealing lights or labor-intensive ice makers, while providing you with ethanol and tallow. And this is the design we are going to build today, so let's have a look at how it works. The ranch houses four spigot seals feeding on the nectar of eight wild bonbon trees. In order for the bonbon trees to produce enough nectar, all of their branches need to be illuminated with a constant 10,000 lux. We achieve this with the strategic placement of 64 ceiling lights. The whole build is cooled with an aquatuna steam turbine combo and includes an incubator setup to keep the ranch populated, as well as an integrated evolution chamber for easy tallow extraction. In the end, we only need access to pips for the wild planting have some spare power and a little bit of duplicant labor to produce 160 kilos of ethanol and 34 kilos of tallow per cycle. This build mainly focuses on tallow production, but the ethanol is a welcome byproduct. Personally, I like to use the produced ethanol to hydrate a little over 10 plume squash plants and combine them with tallow for enough squash fries to feed just shy of 6 duplicants per cycle. The remaining 33 kilos of tallow can be used for other recipes or turned into crude oil, depending on what you need. The cooling loop filled with the ethanol has two purposes. It allows us to chill the evolution chamber down to minus 100 degrees, which is necessary to evolve the seals into tallow since unlike most other critters they do not drown, and it prevents our machines and lights from overheating. Excess seals could be disposed of in a hot evolution chamber as well, but you have to keep in mind that tallow turns into crude oil at 80 degrees and the seals won't evolve until 100 degrees. The ranch itself is kept in a vacuum, so you don't have to worry about temperature controlling the bonbon trees. Although ethanol is not the most effective coolant, its temperature range is perfect for this application, if you don't have access to supercoolant yet. The build needs a constant 640 watts for the lights, and an additional estimated 950 watts whenever the aqua tuner is engaged, because some of its power requirement is counteracted by the steam turbine. The automation requires a total of 1020 watts, but is only active very infrequently, bringing us to a potential power draw of 2860 watts and about 250 watts of power generated from the steam turbine whenever the aqua tuner is active. With the preview out of the way, let's get started on how to build this ranch step by step. All the materials can be sourced from the starting Ceres moonlet and the build uses components unlocked up to the applied science research. The whole structure is 46 tiles wide and 12 tiles high. Obviously, the build can be mirrored to have the entrance on the left if needed, and the steam turbine compartment can be shifted as well. Place down a liquid lock design of your choice, and vacuum the area. This vacuum will remain, so we need to provide our ranchers with atmosuits. Since we want to plant wild bonbon trees, we need to keep natural tiles inside the ranch. The first one will be positioned 5 tiles into the room from your entrance and raised one tile above the floor. From there, we need another 7 with 2 tile gaps in between until we have 8. If you don't have any left in these positions, one method to produce natural tiles is preparing a mold like this, placing down a mechanized or manual airlock and telling your duplicants to deconstruct it again. Then you can remove the mold. Place down a small liquid pump in the bottom right corner, connected to a hydro sensor with a buffer gate in between, and an insulated pipe leading to your farms or storage, as well as regular wire 
and a conveyor rail along the bottom tiles. Set the hydro sensor to 100 kilos and the buffer gate to 160 seconds. Close the floor with mesh tiles afterwards. Then add three auto sweepers and their respective conveyor loaders and connect them with wires and a rail leading to the incubation room ending in a chute. Now place down a critter drop-off and temporarily bring in one or multiple pips and eight bonbon tree seeds. Put ceiling trims over all natural tiles but one and let the pips plant the seeds one by one. It's a good idea to get this done now, because bonbon trees need a whopping 18 cycles to grow and another 18 cycles to fully mature their branches. Luckily, during the first growth period, no exposure to light is required. Remove the pips when all the trees are planted. If the temperature of your natural tiles is too warm, place down a couple of bottle emptiers and let your dupes fetch cool ethanol until the temperature of the tiles drops to below minus 15 degrees. Next, place down a couple of ladders at the entrance and tile the ceiling of the ranch to the end. Glass tiles are mandatory because the 32 ceiling lights we add now shine through them. Add a gas vent to the top left corner and prepare four transformers. The first one will power all the ceiling lights, so place down the main wire and prepare the lights with wires behind them, but don't connect them yet. The second one will power all of the automation and the two last ones will power the aqua tuner. If you place down all the wires in the upper section, complete the cooling loop in this area. Regular granite pipes will provide enough cooling for this. Then complete the second layer of glass tiles, wires and lights one by one until you reach 32 ceiling lights again. Remove the ladders and plug the gap to the upper part with insulated tiles. Then fill the upper part with hydrogen gas. All that is left to construct is the utility part of the build. Complete the rail at the bottom, tile up the bottom right corner and close the room with a nomadic door and window tiles on top. Construct the upper part of the steam chamber and build the aqua tuner. Connect it to the wire we've previously prepared and build a liquid pipe thermosensor with an automation wire next to it. Place down an aluminum metal tile in the bottom right corner and complete the cooling loop for this area. I use aluminum for the radiant pipes. Close off the steam chamber and fill the evolution chamber with 200 kilos of ethanol. Seal it shut and fetch more ethanol for the room with the steam turbine. Build the steam turbine and liquid reservoir, as well as the pipes for this segment. Then fill the steam chamber with one ton of water. Remove the temporary pipes again and connect the system to your main grid. Then seal off the room. Build the critter pickup, incubator, auto sweeper and conveyor loader and connect them to the wire line above. Not the incubator though, that one stays unpowered. Then complete the cooling loop by adding conduction panels behind every auto sweeper and conveyor loader and in the wrench fill the gaps in between them with window tiles. This is necessary to adhere to the maximum wrench size of 96 tiles. For the automation, set the conveyor loaders in the wrench to accept tallow, spigot pop eggs and bonbon tree seeds. Set the conveyor loader in the incubation room to accept tallow, bonbon tree seeds and eggshells. While we are waiting for the bonbon trees to mature, fill the cooling loop with two tons of ethanol and set the liquid pipe thermosensor to send a green signal if the temperature is above minus 100 degrees. Ethanol freezes at minus 114.1 degrees, but needs an extra minus two degrees to freeze in your pipes, so there will be no complications. Once all the bonbon trees have grown and are ready to develop branches indicated by the wilted tip of the trees, we need to activate some lights. Connect every light that is directly above a tree. After 18 cycles, the branches should have fully matured, by which point you will need to plug in all the remaining lights. Now every tile that has a branch in it will be illuminated with at least 10,000 lux and promotes nectar production at 100% capacity, which per tree equates to 20 kilos per cycle. Since we have 8 trees, we can populate the ranch with 4 spigot seals, consuming 160 kilos of nectar each cycle. And with that, your spigot seal ranch is finished. If you have any questions on this build, feel free to ask away in the comment section below and let me know if you want to see a specific topic covered next. If you haven't already, check out my other guides and subscribe for more content like this. Also, if you want to support me further, consider becoming a member of the channel. As always, here's the cheat sheet with all the numbers for this build.
thank you very much for watching and until the next time. Bye!